I went to college and studied philosophy, hence the poverty. Uh, I came to London because I'm a musician, uh, but ended up working for a security company. The wage was pretty poor. Uh, in 1995, it was five quid something an hour, and when I stopped in 2009, it was seven pounds an hour. The security company got us to go self-employed because it's cheaper for them. I didn't really do my calculation for tax. I eventually realised that what I've been putting aside to pay for my bill was woefully inadequate. I stopped going out and didn't really do anything other than spend 10 to 15 pounds a week on pretty much everything. Food, shaving cream, razors, everything. When I was working, uh, I, I did these nights and um, there was one point I was uh, alone in the building and I was up on the top floor. I, I got up on this desk and a window just there. So I could basically stand at this window and look down at the street. Not really thinking I'm going to throw myself off, but thinking about throwing myself off. It, it wasn't like a serious thing in my mind because I knew what that would do to my family and, and also as a, as a person who has an interest in spiritual matters. Spiritually speaking, no one says it's a good idea to kill yourself. I suppose I was, I was feeling the temptation. I, I was. I was kind of thinking, if only I had no family, no spiritual sanction, how nice it would be to do this. I eventually went to my doctor and said, I'm depressed. And one of the things I was offered was therapy on a computer. You don't get any face to face, but they ask you questions and you tap yes, no, or put a number in there and you'll get back. You should go out exercising more. I haven't got that. I've, I've had three sessions so far with a CPT person. So we do a, a test once a week. Um, you know, uh, rate from one to eight. Uh, do you avoid socialising due to paranoia? One of, the, uh, one of them is, have you considered killing yourself in the last two weeks? I, I could have done more shifts at the security job, but I was knackered, basically. So I thought go on the dole or find a new job. And finding a, a job has been difficult because <laughs> well, my CV reads security work for 15 years. I'm actually a lot better off now than I was. I'm on 64 pounds something a week, um, but I get my housing benefit as well, plus I'm not paying any tax, uh, plus I'm not paying council tax. Uh, and now my food bill is about 30 to 35 quid. I'm, I'm actually a lot happier. I'd be quite happy to maintain things as they are in a way because I can live and, and I can make music. When I last signed on, I was told that not only do you have to accept any work that's offered to you, but they can even make you accept work that doesn't pay you enough money to live on. It's good for the employers because they can offer a job that doesn't actually pay you enough money to live on and uh, someone has to take it. There was one, some sort of taxi thing. Uh, working four in the morning to ten in the morning for less than the London living wage and they had the nerve to say must have good attitude. Oh yeah, I mean you're going to be a lovely person getting in at four in the morning for rubbish money and a crap job. And the whole system now is that if you want to get a job that pays a reasonable amount you have to sign up for body and soul. If you go even for a receptionist position they go we, we want someone who loves working on reception, but it's a passion for them. <laughs> I'd say there's not one person in the British Isles who loves working on reception. But it's this duplicitous process. You've got to say that. You have all these hierarchies in the, the average working environment where, where you get shat on by the person above you, but you, you get to shit on the person below you. So, and that's very pervasive in, in pretty much any working environment I've been in. I just think that these places cause emotional distress. And not only for me, I mean, the only difference for me is that I'm kind of conscious of it, I'm, I'm aware, I'm constantly thinking about it. You know, I don't know if I'd say to the younger version of myself, make money at all costs. But then again, there's, there's part of me that thinks if, if you don't do that, then you've got a hard road ahead. And that again is, is when you get seduced into uh, you need to make sure, above all else, that you are an efficient money-making machine.
That's part of the thing, isn't it? Everyone is seduced so that you stop thinking about as a society, what kind of society do we want? And, and instead, as an individual, how can I protect myself from all the bad things that will happen if I'm not loaded?